Good Tuesday morning. It's Holy Tuesday and Holy Week, and we are continuing our devotional reflections on the seven I am statements of Jesus. These are his identity statements with the seven last words of Christ that really get at the sacrifice of what Jesus of, of Jesus and, and what that means and, and what he does in the midst of that. And we, as we talked about, we see who Jesus is most clearly in what he does and how he responds as he goes to the cross, as he dies for our sins, and ultimately as he is resurrected from the dead and uh, ascends into heaven. He's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, who lives eternally in heaven with God. And so uh, today we are looking at Jesus' statement, I am the door or I am the gate from uh, John chapter 10. And then Jesus' uh, statement in Luke chapter 23, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. In, in John chapter 10, Jesus is talking with the Pharisees and he's talking about the way into the kingdom. And he says, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep, or I am the door for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers for the sheep, uh, but the, the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate, and whoever enters through me will be saved. Jesus is talking about his exclusivity, his exclusive claim to be the Messiah, the only way to the Father. And he says that in another statement later on that we'll talk about as well. But he's saying, the entrance is through me. And as Jesus is being nailed to the cross, as he's being raised up, as he has been tortured and, and, and mutilated and, and gone through the absolute worst death imaginable, Jesus says in the midst of that, as he's looking on those who have nailed him to the cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And is that air of forgiveness that is so important. And I would say that air of, of forgiving as Christ forgave us, that is the doorway in a sense, because Jesus offers forgiveness for our sins by dying on the cross. In a sense, we are those same scoffers. I, I do love uh, the, the the song, How Deep the Father's Love. Right? Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. And when Jesus is looking down on those who are mocking him, we are there because it's our sin that contributes to Jesus' death. And yet Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And in that forgiveness, Jesus says, in his teaching, throughout his ministry, and we see even into the New Testament, right, that, that, that forgiveness becomes almost a paradigm for entering into our, re-establishing re our relationship with God, but then it also becomes something that happens because we've been forgiven, we are called to forgive. <clears throat> Interestingly, I think uh, modern psychology would have us think that in, in the instance of hurt caused by another, that we have to heal ourselves to be in a place to forgive. But the Bible actually flips that on its head and says, we have to forgive others as Christ has forgiven us. And that is the thing that leads to healing. That healing can't take place when the offense is still active. Instead, the offense must be atoned for, and in, in the case of our sins, Jesus' death on the cross, in the, in the case of a sin against us, that we have to offer forgiveness and be willing to lay that down, lay down our pride, lay down whatever it is that we have to lay down, and then that barrier is removed and healing is possible. Now, I'm not saying that's easy. I'm not saying it's it's something we can just readily do, but it's something that we are called to. Jesus tells us about it in in his the way that he teaches us to pray, right? Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Ooh, that's rough. 
that is a really rough statement. It's a hard statement to make, right? Jesus talks about this as well when he's talking about, um, when he's talking to his disciples, right? Uh, he says, forgive. This is Luke chapter 7, verse 47. He says, um, scrolling down, therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown. The love that we express is based on the forgiveness that we have received. Because our sins are completely forgiven, we can show love and forgive each other just as in Christ God has forgiven us. It's a big thing. Jesus also says, whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. And the reality for us is that when we are forgiven, we are forgiven completely. Our sins are washed away. And, and we are fooling ourselves if we think that there's only a few, a few sins that have been washed away. Or we only have a few sins to atone for because we are somehow better than others. Scripture says, whoever has broken even one commandment of the law is guilty of all of it. As if you have broken every commandment. And so sometimes I wonder if this is actually a perception thing where not only are we called to forgive others just as we have forgiven, but it also challenges our perception of who we are. Maybe we're not so bad. Maybe, you know, Jesus died for their sins more than for mine because I don't have so many. That's a rough challenge. That perhaps we need to see the reality of the forgiveness that we have received. And then take that reality into the forgiveness that we offer. And in doing so, we are opening the door to restore relationships vertically, or no, I'm sorry, horizontally between each other. And also, showing people the door that is Jesus Christ that will eventually link that that links our relationship with God in heaven vertically but then also shows them the door to the way that they can be linked to their relationship with God in heaven through Jesus Christ as well Jesus says I am the door father forgive them but they don't know what they are doing I pray that your Tuesday is blessed, and I pray that you have a sense, again, of what is going on in this week and are drawn towards a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ.